Hi folks and welcome to the quarterfinals of uh, Dominion Line Championship 2020. This time it's, uh, it's uh, Marcus versus uh, Pop 180. And uh, uh, I'm joined today by Josh Nicholas. Hi everyone, uh, thanks for tuning in. Mm. Uh, yeah, excuse me. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, nice to be here. Yeah. So uh, uh, here we go with the first board, and uh, hey, that that looks packed, yeah, right? So um, it looks like Snowy Village is going to be pretty relevant here um, as the only village on the board, unless um, you sacrifice as a village. Um, yeah, you might you might want uh, village uh, to play your bridges, so that uh, that's probably going to be relevant. I'd say since uh, since the day should be extremely relevant here, because with such an explosive payload, a double turn could be devastating. Yeah. So the opening should probably be should probably involve spice merchant, right? I mean, there is no way around that. Yeah, I've got to agree with you there. Oh, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> what do you know, huh? <laughs> I, guess, I guess research makes a bit of sense to get rid of the states. Well, I guess I guess what the research does, it does it, it you know it maybe makes you a little, a little bit faster to to five potentially because spice merchant is not particularly good at that yeah you could potentially not go with spice merchant at all and, um, go, uh, draw with a lot of stables mm, I mean you want it anyway right <laughs> Probably still want it, yeah. Yeah. Because <clears throat> you kind of, yeah, I, I, I can't really imagine. You know, you, you definitely want this uh, huge deck with uh, like, um, uh, I don't know, like three bridges and uh, some stables and grand markets and maybe like a rebel and like maybe like sacrifice uh, for. More consistency. Yeah, that sounds pretty good to me. So, Pop 180 does go with the Spice Merchant. Mm -hmm. And then Marcus takes it on turn three. Uh, yeah, so Marcus did not hit five on his shuffle. And Pop did, so that's that's good for him. Should hit it on the next shuffle if you'd expect that. Yeah. Obviously, you'd rather hit it on the shuffle. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's actually, actually going to end up hitting eight here. Yeah. This could be a turn five province. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not really. But. So, yeah, Marcus ended up uh, getting two silvers, which isn't. I guess isn't the worst thing, right? Because you you kind of want to get this grand market or or to like. Yeah, I I don't mind uh, the second silver though. I guess if you had got the snowy last time, maybe could have got the silver this time. Um, mm -hmm. So Pop is moving along here. Mm. Uh, he's not. Uh, he's not really hitting uh, hitting five here. He might. Uh, he might pick up. I don't think he can. I think he's only got the one silver. The yeah. The spice yeah. So, it might be a bridge for him. I would think. 
at this point. Yeah, I think, I think the bridge sounds pretty good, yeah. I mean, eventually that bridge is going to be your payload, so... Um, it's... You could also delve twice. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess you would, uh, I, I mean, with stables being the, the main source of draw, uh, you definitely want, uh, you are definitely okay with some silvers in this deck. But, um, maybe it's, maybe he still has, you know, uh, a whole bunch of coppers in, in, in the decks. So, I don't know. So, let's see if he is going to draw it. And nope. So this might be uh, a silver. Well, it's six, uh, six is a bit awkward, right? Uh, yeah, it's a bit awkward uh, without being able to get the grand marker. Uh, Delph Snowy, I mean, yeah, I, I, I think I like that just because you really want the second silver and, you know, I, I might see it, I might see another stables at this point because, you know, you just want to draw just a little bit mm, more. Mm. Uh, and do... Yeah, that's true. That's true. You might also go like Delph second bridge before Snowy. Because, I mean, at this point, Snowy ain't gonna do the whole lot for you, right? Yeah, it's not gonna do a whole lot for you yet, but it will eventually. Yeah, obviously, but right now you'd rather. I mean, if you. Right now, you'd rather, you know, increase your chances of seeing the bridge, even if you can't play to... But it uh, goes for the snow, it's, it's okay as well. Hmm. Hey, so Marcus here triggers this shuffle, which is, I'm not sure... Uh, but he can get up to Grand Market here. If he wants to. Yeah, you can take the grand market here. Hmm. But uh, how do? Also, go stables delve potentially. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's also a consideration, I guess. But uh, how do you like triggering the shuffle and I mean trashing the uh, research in this estate? Hmm. Because uh, it looks like uh, those cards are, well, yeah, I mean, I guess that's an okay shuffle, right? With the Spice Merchant. Yeah, although you, um, yeah, no, it is okay. Yeah. yeah it could have bottomed bottom Spice Merchant, you're really mm. sad there, but uh, didn't happen during that scenario. So it looks like pop uh, pop's turn is not ideal because um, actually he he ain't gonna see any of his sewers. Mm. Probably it should be another stables for him. Although the next turn, you know, with uh, with two cards set aside with the research, next turn he's likely to draw. So maybe it should be like. Another bridge. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think I prefer the stables to start. Make the deck a bit more consistent. Yeah, that uh, stables. There is a chance that you don't draw your entire deck next turn. Yeah, yeah, and stables kind of guarantees you that you get your, you know, this, this grand market the next turn is the, if that's what you what you want to do anyway. So that's four, yeah, I mean. It gets, it gets a bridge though. 
So it goes for, you know, a bit more greedy. And if he does not see his uh, uh, stables or spice merchant, that ain't gonna be good for him. Yeah, it's definitely gonna be sad if he doesn't see either of those two cards. So Marcus uh, here having a nice turn uh, didn't uh, didn't find his uh, grand market, but it's fine. They can still go for like double stables, or probably Marcus actually wants to go into yeah. He wants uh, the snowy now yeah. and increase his uh, bridge payload. So stable snowy actually looks good. <clears throat> Delve in there as well if you want. Well, I'm not sure if you do. Yeah, me neither because he already has three silvers, and that's you know, mm, I'm not sure you want this many because I mean, eventually it's going to be fine, but with only single stables and uh, in the deck right now, it, it might be a bit of uh, you know, an, an overkill. Yeah, I think it's a bit ambitious to um, delve as well. Yeah, um. Snowy and Stables seems like the right two buys here. Mm -hmm. uh, looks like that's what uh, he's going to do. All right. Oh, hey, so here is Stables for Pop, so he's in a good shape here. Going to yeah, find... Yeah, uh, very nice for Pop. Yeah, that's, uh, that's an amazing turn for him can uh, play the Spice Merchant for money. And then that'll leave him at eight with everything costing two of us. Mm, yeah, I mean, if he doesn't want to play the Copper, which I assume he probably, yeah, it, it might be just, you know, like double Grand Market, or it might be like Grand Market and well, two more bridges is probably a bit ambitious. But it's funny how these decks, how they are never have, uh, you know, kind of the time slot to get a bit, just a little bit more draw. Yeah, it seems like they've optimized it fairly well, though. Like, I mean, you can get more stables here, but. It's it's a bit awkward. You kind of want to add more payload. I don't know. In fact, uh, I mean, right now uh, he only has two coppers, right, and this state left. So his deck, uh, he's actually quite thin. So Cable suggests not to take any GMs here. Mm. I guess, you know, you, you can think about it, but... Uh... Yeah, I think it's okay not to take Grand Market here. Well, yeah, it might make sense because, you know, what you actually want, you know, in your deck is more bridges and more draw. And, uh, I mean, obviously Grand Market would be, like, really nice for you... you with the with the bridges payload you and with limited uh, limited actions you you really want those plus buys for you know for the potential pile out and whatnot for more control but uh, maybe it's just a little bit expensive here to buy this grand market Get sacrifice, but uh, he's not playing the. He's not playing the copper, so apparently he's still going for this grand market. Uh, looks like we'll probably get an here. Hmm. Yeah, I, I would expect him to, to play the copper here. 
Ja. ja. <clears throat> hmm. Double sacrifice. All right. So you decide. Oh. 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 So it's, it's going for the bridge mega turn, I think. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah. I guess I guess the sacrifice is a nice substitute for stables as in uh, in terms of draw here and boosts uh, reliability quite some. Mm, so that's an interesting angle by Pop. So we'll see if uh, that's going to be good for them. Mm. <laughs> right now he's kind of committed to not uh, to trash at least one action uh, from his deck if he wants to play them all. Yeah, he does have a couple of actions he can bend off. He can get rid of the Spice Merchant now and uh, the Research. Yeah, that's true. I mean, a Researcher is still... If he's not drawing any, uh, everything, he, a Research is still good. He can still kill this last estate. Meanwhile, Marcus here is in trouble because he didn't find his stables. And he has two copies of stables, so that's quite unlucky for him. I wonder if, as Pop, you can start thinking of maybe piling out the next turn, if you draw, obviously, uh, with the Seize the Day. But uh, looks uh, maybe it's... they're not quite there. Yeah, I'm probably not quite there yet. Uh, what would be the three piles as well? States. Yeah, Bridge would obviously be one. Yeah, I, I think a states. Eventually, but yeah, he he didn't really draw well on us, and yes, <laughs> Naismith is right here because uh, Pop doesn't really have the whole lot of draw. His only draw is those two sacrifices and uh, stables. And sacrifice isn't really a draw though, because you're playing the sacrifice, you're trashing an action card, and yeah, you're getting yeah. back to five cards. That's true. That's true. And also uh, didn't find the uh, research this turn, so no duration draw for the next turn as well. And meanwhile, look at, uh, at Marcus' hand here. <laughs> it's really funny how, yeah, that's classic, like all the draw at the bottom of the deck. Yeah, it just, it just always seems to happen like that, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, at least the uh, stables uh, found their coppers here. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, yeah, normally when you get to the bottom of the draw here, you just don't see your treasures and you think about closing your browser and slamming your keyboard, sh um, your laptop shut. But he does have some treasures here, thankfully. Yeah. So, I, I guess Pop has to think about putting some draw into his deck, right? Uh, yeah, but I also think how many bridges does Marcus have? How many did he play last turn? So he only has three, right? Yeah, he bought he bought two the last turn and he played one. Uh, is three bridges enough to be like a, a, at least a little bit competitive in this game, uh, or are more needed? I wonder if Pop can just deny all the bridges. Will that be good? Might be not necessary, but uh, with the with if, yeah, go ahead. If Pop can deny all the bridges and then make his deck go somewhere, then it will be winning, but. Can he? Uh, can they get their deck to? Uh, he can actually play all of those bridges in the long term. 
Yeah, actually, he doesn't really need to play them. He now has those two sacrifices, so he can just uh, trash them. And, and yeah, he can trash them as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, actually, yeah. Don Donald is right here. One of the bridges is in a trash pile already, along with uh, with this spice merchant. <clears throat> so, I, what do you think about like going stables and bridge here? Looks like the most. Um, yeah, I, I think that works. Oh, gets a gets a rebel, so he's a bit scared of not finding enough treasures apparently, or maybe he's scared of the pile out on the Marcus double turn on like stables. But that that looks a bit uh, like it's a bit too early for that. Yeah, the the rebel is better to draw though as well. Um... I wonder if he takes another sacrifice. Mm. Yeah, I guess uh, he's thinking now between uh, bridge and sacrifice. Although four bridges is four bridges should be enough for like a lot of things. <laughs> so leaving four bridges for Marcus is not like in any by any means um, a den denial play. Yeah, wait, Marcus only has three though, doesn't he? Hmm? Yeah. Mar Marcus only has three bridges, yeah. Yeah, right now, but uh, he now has access to another one. So, yeah. so Pop ended up uh, loading on draw a bit, gets a rebel and the stables, <clears throat> and a whole bunch of bridges. So, Marcus finally has a nice turn here. Mm. Yeah, this is very nice from Marcus. Maybe he's now thinking whether he should have been playing Snowy first and then Spice Merchant for money. Although, yeah, um... The last card must be a silver. No, never mind, he trashed his third silver. So what is it? Uh, like, just another copper? All right, here's... I think it's just another... Yeah, I think it's just another combo. Yeah, because what else could it be, right? Yeah. Yeah, you'd obviously yeah want to draw that combo with the Snowy Village. And, yeah. yeah. That looks better. <clears throat> so... Marcus should be really, really careful now because next turn, Pop, uh, if if Marcus is uh, lowering the piles too much here, on next turn Pop can seize the day and potentially has a pile out. Yeah. Um, yeah, he could potentially do that. I'm not sure how viable it is with these decks taken. So he could. Lower and seize the day, and then just uh, leave, uh, just not be able to pile out in your second turn. Mm, yeah, on the possibility of Marcus seizing now, uh, those those grand markets are still too damn uh, expensive, right? Because ideally, you would maybe get more plus buys in this last bridge and. Uh, try and you know maybe s some sacrifices try and seize but you can't really feed it all in in the money you have and it might be just not enough uh, buys just not enough gains to end the game yeah on the other hand uh, what do you think about the line of maybe getting uh, bridge, some snowy villages, some sacrifices, and actually, with a good draw, 
it might be enough. Maybe maybe that's what he should try and do here. Because otherwise, well, uh, we know that maybe Pop doesn't have like the best hand ever, right? <laughs> but Marcus can't know that. So he he might expect Pop to be able to finish in uh, in his double turn. Yeah, that's possible. Um, so if we if you are saving the day here, what are we buying? If you if you see, I don't know. You you definitely get the bridge and probably you you add more draw you. I, uh, so, how many? You don't really need the whole lot of plus actions. I would maybe get like one sacrifice just to be, you know, for a, you know an emergency maybe plus action or something, and uh, like another snow. And you probably want to lower snow villages as well, right? Because that's going to be one of your piles. Yeah, and that also gets you more um, buy for your final pilot. Okay. So Marcus decided it's a bit too early for to seize. So uh, and uh, he now need, needs to hope that uh, Pop won't gonna have his uh, huge double turn. And Pop, in fact, has a terrible draw here. So I guess as Marcus now, you can probably start thinking about that two-turn pilot. I wonder. I wonder if uh, Pop should just seize now, and uh, but he can't. He can't end on his seize turn, right? Mm. Pop doesn't. Uh, Pop doesn't have any grand markets, so he's gonna be terribly short on buys. And mm. yeah, kind of. I, I think I agree with you there. I think you have to seize him. Or it's like a defensive play to stop your opponent yeah, being I, able to seize and pile up. Yeah, you'll probably need gonna need to like green, right? Yeah, you probably need to green on your uh, seize turn, I think. Hmm. Interesting. So you, you would imagine if. Doesn't seize here. Marcus will be able to end it over it, two turns. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so Marcus doesn't have uh, research in play now. So he can, with a, with a convenient draw, he might even uh, set up his seize turn with uh, some research play. So. I can definitely see uh, Pop not seizing the day now and then just hoping that Marcus' turn is not also very good. Because if you seize, you kind of, it kind of seriously limits uh, what your deck can do uh, in the future, you know. Because you, uh, you won't really have this possibility of this double turn anymore. Your 
So yeah, that's definitely uh, quite a d dilemma here. Mm. Uh, goals for seeds. All right. I'm on board with that. Mm -mm. Well, I guess, I guess you should just end the turn now, right? Because, I mean, you ain't buying coppers. Maybe he's thinking of buying coppers. <laughs> I mean, uh, he's he's extremely likely to be able to draw those coppers the next turn. But, uh, yeah. Uh, I think it might have just been more of just double checked up, considering if he uh, wanted to seize. I guess. So this turn, uh, actually, the snowy village is in the discard, so he's gonna. Mm, he would need to draw uh, to tra uh, trash something with sacrifice. Oh, maybe not. Here's the second stables, right? Yeah, okay, well, I I kind of see that line, so um, Pop can't really win here, so he needs, uh, what he's uh, assumably trying to do right now is he's uh, going to green and uh, thus make his deck a bit worse, and now he can't really do this double turn, and then Marcus' life is going to be quite easier, even if he stalls the next turn so and yeah it's, it's definitely it's definitely not a spot that you're looking to seize but i, I think as a defensive play it's mm -hmm. almost necessary yeah but yeah, you definitely have to bring here. Mm -hmm. So do sack one of the bridges here, I, I guess. Uh, well. Mm, I get, oh no! Never mind. Never mind. I I missed. He trashed his uh, must be a rebel, right? Yeah. So had enough actions already. Oh, that's fine then. So I guess you you want to triple. Pile dashes. That's ah uh, uh, hmm hmm. I don't know. I mean, I think in the course of two turns you can beat that with the you know building more in the first turn and then second turn you just you know. Basically, pile the provinces if Pop goes for the duchies. So, I think you just triple to be honest. <clears throat> and yeah, if you if you load on uh, if you load uh, on the dashes now in addition to those provinces, then you ain't getting you ain't really buying anything else, and it's just going to be easy for Marcus to uh, outscore that in uh, in a single like mega turn, right? Yeah, uh, if you had if you had too much green here, then you, your deck just turns into the into the Titanic and it can't move. 
Yeah, and also again, Pop doesn't really have the whole lot of draw. Uh, he trashed his rebel this turn, so those two stables is the, the only thing that's left. I wonder if uh, Pop will eventually um, research one of those provinces for a whole lot of draw. Well, <laughs> I think Pop's problem right now is that there ain't gonna be this eventually moment, right? Uh, I, w I, w I would still expect uh, that Marcus would uh, be able to get the rest of the provinces on, on his turn, on his double turn. How do you think? Yeah, that's probably right. Because, you know, with uh, for uh, if he's able to play all his grand markets, all his bridges, uh, then it, it's probably, you know, he doesn't even need to do it in a single turn. So, the only ter uh, terrible thing for Marcus that can happen is that he takes Seize the Day and then he does not draw the next turn. Why is it research? Uh, I think he's going to try and research provinces. You know, I don't, I don't really see the research here just because, you know, so research implies that you're going to have, you know, a turn where you're going to play it. And that's a bit of a stretch already, to be honest. And then it also implies that you're going to have this turn where you actually benefit from it. And that's, I think, totally out of reach, to be honest. So, yeah, I think so as well. A research is a bit weird. Maybe he sees some line, you know, maybe he he's kind of try, uh, thinking that, okay, maybe if Marcus uh, stalls right now, then because I'm ahead in points, maybe I'm going to be able to drag this game a little bit longer so that... Yeah, maybe that's his angle. <clears throat> it's another sack and another snowy. All right. Okay, let's see what Marcus can can do here. That looks a little bit scary, so no stables. Yeah. And... Um, so I guess you you want, you know, with so many cantrips left in the deck, you probably don't want to play the snowy now, so you just trash the silver, right? Yeah, I think you trash the silver, yeah. Yeah, definitely trashing that silver. Yeah, I mean, what, what else can you do? Okay, and here's the here's the beautiful safe with the stables and copper, but then again, uh, yeah. And this turn definitely could have been better for Marcus here. So. Uh, Again, there is stables down there and a couple of grand markets. And now Marcus is actually in an interesting spot, let's just say. Yeah, this is very interesting. Definitely, uh, you're not seizing here. Yeah, I guess. I think, yeah, you want to try and set up to end. Yeah, because the next two turns. Because if you seize, I mean, 
you are just uh, you're just gonna have the same position as Pop uh, has, but with less amount of points. And, and I mean, because you can't really, as Marcus, you can't really take like triple right, because then it's really scary that Pop take, takes double. Although at this point, Pop's deck is kind of you know messy. you've got to think about ending it next turn because you, you probably the way I see it Pop's probably going to research a province and have to have another big turn mm, might be so it, it doesn't necessarily need to be a province right it can still be like a, a it, another sacrifice it could be a rebel or something like yeah that. yeah or sacrifice and yeah, I don't know uh, anything Basically. <clears throat> so yeah, definitely a, an extremely, extremely uh, interesting uh, end game here, and. Uh, I really like uh, Seize the Day as an event because it kind of enables uh, this this huge double turn mega turns, so to so to speak. Yeah, it, it just makes games so much different. Uh, yeah, it, it's just a small square shaped object and. It just completely bends the way that you have to think about the game. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, people in the chat generally suggest taking more grand markets, which uh which is smart because you uh, pop can't really uh, can't really pile right so as marcus you just i guess you just try and build accumulate uh economy and uh, uh try to hope that you i mean that you finally gonna draw nicely and uh, uh, have this uh, big turn Yeah, I think yeah, double grand market does make sense. Um, um, it doesn't have that much treasure, does it? So I'm not sure how much sense the stab um, stables would make. Well, actually, yeah, he only has one silver left, right? And we we see two coppers. And how many how many coppers did Pop have the last turn? Pope has two coppers, so Marcus only have a silver, only has a silver and two coppers. So definitely that's, and also it means uh, the next hand, like it, it, it's gonna have a stables, right? Because stables is on the research mat. Uh, but oh, never mind. There is still another silver down there. Yeah. So that at least should be fine. Yeah, it should be a nice turn for Marcus next turn. <clears throat> How do you think, as Pop, would you would you make Marcus resign? Resist the urge to press it. But, <laughs> uh, you definitely can't make him resign here. As uh, much as you would love to, uh, you <laughs> just can't. I mean, I mean, this button is so tempting. You just want to click yes. 
in this league's, uh, league because matches and championship. <laughs> because it, the, it, it says make opponent put, resign. It really, the way I picture it in my head is press this button and win the game. Oh my god, would you look at that? Um, yeah, so he's gonna go for Sacrifice Snowy Village Pilot. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Hmm, so apparently Marcus thought hard about it and uh I assume he thinks he now has a way. Mm. So uh, he has he has four bridges, right? If he plays all his bridges, Provence is gonna be at four each. Uh, he played his, all his grand markets already, so it's like eight coins. Um, to pile the provinces, he would need what, like. Uh, actually, uh, that would be twenty. Right? Uh, yeah. Uh, so. Uh, if he if he gets to play all of his bridges. Uh, that's twelve. Then um, say a silver, right? That's fourteen. Mm. Maybe. So if he play, if he plays both of his bridges. Uh, how many buys is he going to have? Uh, that, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Well, about about 10, let's just say, or like 11. Uh, so what's up with the duchies? Eight, eight, uh, eight duchies is what? Uh, 20, so eight duchies is enough. So uh, is uh, duchies sacrifice as possible? So that's uh... yeah. Dodgy sacrifices in hand, isn't it? Oh yeah. Well done, Marcus. Huh. That, that's very nice. Yeah. Nice, nice. That's uh, uh, that's really impressive to find this win <clears throat> for Marcus here. And yeah, seeing that reinforces why I'm commentating this game and not playing this game. Um, that was pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah, same goes to me, man. Uh, so yeah, first game goes to Marcus. Uh, him being a first player, so we can blame everything on that. And uh, yes, uh, that that was definitely the only factor in that game. Yeah, it was all entirely player one. And as RTT points out, this game lasted almost fifty minutes. <laughs> Anyways, here's a new kingdom, and uh, so nobody has five two, apparently, which uh, is which is probably good yeah. for the game. There's no boss boys here, but there is stone mason. Well, I mean, uh, there are no no good uh, treasure gainers. Well, hello, bureaucrat. I mean, <laughs> bureaucrat could finally be relevant. Mm, I mean, yeah, I wish bureaucrat was just a little bit better, but uh, here. 
I mean, here you really want those sewers, right? Because because of both storyteller and recruiter. Uh, but I mean, uh, it still sucks. I think it could actually be viable here. Yeah. I mean, this board is probably the closest uh, of many, many boards where you, uh, you know, to, to the point where you, you should consider buying a bureaucrat or like gaining one. Hey, I'm, I'm just. I'm just glad that I've finally seen a board with bureaucrat on it where it's at, it's even a consideration. Because normally, <laughs> normally it's not even a consideration. But yeah. Here you can consider it. Yeah. As, uh, <laughs> do you remember? Do, have you seen the the board where Steph uh, played a bureaucrat pin? Um. I don't think I've seen that. Um, I'm gonna need to go and watch that after this. Yeah, because I I think the the board still exists on on Steph's uh, Twitch account, and uh, it was like many years ago, and uh, the board was he was pretty much lost. Uh, he's a uh, he's he was having terrible draws, and opponent was buying like Border Village Margrave, Border Village Margrave, and so on and so forth. And then Steph noticed that there is actually you no know, uh, masquerade, and I think it was yeah it was bureaucrat and uh, uh, hand size attacks in the face of Margrave. So he was it, actually all the components needed for the bureaucrat pin. So he was able to pull it off, and <laughs> that was that was quite amazing. That, that just sounds so amazing. I'm gonna have to. I'm definitely gonna watch that. Yeah, I'll. I'll try to find this link. I, I, I've changed my opinion on bureaucrat now. I'm every, <laughs> from now on every game. I'm just gonna look for bureaucrat if, oh, hey. if it's on the board. Uh, thanks, soccer is fun because uh, yeah, I, well, I, I right. think that's thanks that's that. yeah, that's the link. <clears throat> well, anyways, what's what's going on there? Apparently, they both opened with the double silver and they both opened double silver and. Uh, Pop's got the recruiter. Yeah, and uh, Pop is uh, as having the a draw of his life, uh, hitting five two times in a, uh, in a second shuffle. So that's very good. Uh, Marcus can get double recruiter here, though. Oh, uh, he yeah. can get two five cost cards with the uh, stone mason. That's true. That's true. Hmm, interesting. So Pop go, go, goes for... Uh, Cursed village. Hmm. Yeah, that is interesting. So, uh, cursed village kind of yeah. indicates that he maybe wants the vault shenanigans, the vault as a payload here. And that's not a good draw for Pop. Yeah. I mean, he's no, still that's terrible. Oh. he's still likely to hit five the next turn. Well, not it's not like he's super likely, but it's still quite possible, right? But that's not that a good draw. This probably is just a plaza here, right? Yep. That doesn't even hit five here either. So, yeah, th thing is, uh, see, uh, Cursed Village is kind of mm, an interesting angle because I, I can see like two different approaches that you either try and draw with like, you know, basically storytellers, right? Or you try and do this uh, mm, uh, kind of draw to X uh, kind of deck with the uh, Cursed Village and Vault and try to benefit from that. Oh, hey, Marcus go for, goes for the library, and that's also that's, that's the different kind of draw to X. 
Mm, yeah, okay, uh, you know what? Uh, let's just see what they can do, because apparently they're not doing what the chat suggests, or... <laughs> yeah, library is a little bit weird, right? Mm. Yeah, I would have thought that Curse Village is better than library. I mean, I would, I would see library being better than the Curse Village if there, will, uh, if there would be a nice, you know, like, gold gainer on the board, and that would that would just allow your recruiter to never run out of fuel and you you won't really you wouldn't really need to care about villagers but the villagers are kind of limited a little bit here and you can't really build your engines uh, your engine on just terminal cards so <clears throat> Yeah, that, that's true. Um, unless you're gonna um, stonemason for some recruiter fruit, potentially. Mm, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, you definitely get some extra extra cards here too. Oh, meanwhile, uh, pops pops definitely not having the good draws again here. His uh, our recruiter missed. Uh, the shuffle this time, so that's yeah. not really going great for him. Yeah, pretty much everything missed though. Yeah. What, uh, both his recruiter and uh, Cursed Village ride. So that's uh, quite terrible. Okay. <clears throat> uh, sometimes you feel like when it rains it pours kind of thing. I feel like he's just going to buy Curse Village here and fan and miss everything. Uh, meanwhile, yeah, we see a miracle. Oh, a bureaucrat's in the game. Uh, right, right. So Marcus goes for the best card on the board. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And so, yeah, I guess that is your food for your recruiters then. Um, if you're going to do this library. Uh, I mean... Let's how do how do you compare playing bureaucrat and then playing recruiter and trash in the silver to playing a village? Is that the equivalent, mm, or is it slightly worse? <laughs> <laughs> I mean seriously, you so you need to spend uh, an action to play the bureaucrat. You need to spend an action on playing the recruiter. So your net gain is one uh, villager, right? basically so uh you draw what you draw uh, you remove two cards from your hand and you draw one uh it, it kind of it kind of sucks yeah <laughs> you've forgotten about the devastating attack i mean yeah but <laughs> i don't expect them them having the whole lot of uh green cards in, in the decks it, it's also not as devastating if your opponent's drawing tags as well. Uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, man, about this bureaucrat. To be honest, it looks it looks nice, but uh, silver gaining is just s so much worse in, for for this purpose in comparison to gold gaining. But this library, you know, th that's a really good turn for Marcus here. Yeah, he gets to uh, draw us everything, doesn't he? Oh, um, no, he, misses, he has one more. <laughs> I think that's a really nice quotation from the, uh, from the uh, game log right now. Marcus draws a bureaucrat. Marcus looks at bureaucrat. That's, you know, I, I think that that kind of sounds interesting, you know, <laughs> those two <Yeah>. lines. <laughs> <laughs> so, hit sound again, which is obviously really good. So, who, uh, who has the vault now? I kind of missed this moment. Uh, Pop, Pop bought one the last turn, right? Uh, what was that, sorry? Uh, the uh, vault, vault buy. So, oh, the vault. Uh, yeah. yeah, that was Pop. Uh, 
So now they both have, have one. And nobody's going for storyteller, storyteller. So apparently they both kind of want the, the, the draw to X decks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, draws at bureaucrats, looks at bureaucrat, questions life decisions. <laughs> So, uh, as of as of now, Pop only has one draw to X card. So this vote actually isn't doing the whole lot for this turn. But that's nevertheless enough to hit uh, seven. And yeah, have... I guess that's probably what you had in here. So. Um, yeah, right now you probably still overpay for uh, another vault and another, like either library or CV, and I guess it should be a CV, right? Um, probably. I think he, he's got four villages as well, though. Um, yeah, also another consideration for Pop to go for CV is uh, Triumphal Arch uh, because uh, he has zero libraries and uh, you know, he, you, I think yeah, you either, either go for one or another. Mm. Although maybe... Uh, he's got plaza, he's got two plazas and two recruiters, so those are the arch points at the moment. Mm. I guess, but I, I don't think you ever get another recruiter, right? Um, so you kind of need two other, uh, you kind of need another, well, I guess, hmm, <laughs> you might potentially have more plazas and stone masons, maybe. Yeah, I was just thinking that. I think, yeah, probably stone mason will be one of your arch files and Probably Plaza is the other one. And I think he can take the library here. Might be okay. Yeah, that's what he does. <clears throat> um, you probably would, at some point, you might want to trash your stone, uh, your recruiter into a couple of plazas, maybe, or like an, even into like Plaza Action Troop. I don't know. Yeah, I see that happening later on. Uh, so Marcus here hits his uh, vault and the library. That's probably what he always wanted to see. Yeah, psychomatic. The the first game lasted almost fifty minutes. But it was a nice one. Very, yeah, it was, it was an interesting one. <clears throat> so, do you discard just everything uh, as a mark was here, or do you keep a pl this plaza? Hmm. Um, oh, yeah, I would have kept the plaza. I wasn't sure about it. Stonemason, though. Oh, yeah. Stonemason has a really nice target here. <laughs> oh, no. The poor bureaucrat. Uh, oh, never mind. Never mind. So Marcus is sure he, uh, he wants to was it the first time he played this bureaucrat? Oh no, never mind, he played it before. I played it before, yeah. And I I know what he why he's doing that. Because you know, if he would only play it once, then it's it would probably be more reasonable to just buy a, a silver in the first place. So but now he played it twice, so the next time it's already justified, right? So the next time he can safely trash it. That, that sounds good to me. <laughs> right. <clears throat> so 
it, will that be a bronze? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, with yeah, it's pretty easy to there. Yeah, with it's no on the, with no plus buy, well. and yeah, battlefield definitely pushes towards uh, green a little bit earlier here. There is something to be said about maybe delaying green a little bit because you can get uh, additional points from Triumphal Arch. Mm. But uh, still, you can't really build to double price or anything, so it's kind of fine here to green early, I think. <clears throat> and you can still boost. Yeah, and you can do the other stuff later as well. Yeah, you can still boost your arch uh, via stone mason and stuff. <clears throat> so, Pop does not have the whole lot of villagers left mm, but he he does have a second recruiter now so uh, he's yet to draw another recruiter so it should be fine for this turn at least it should be fine for this turn um, yeah but the, the, the lack of villages is a little bit alarming I think Mason the sewer. Hmm. I don't know. I don't because you want to play this library, right? You don't. You don't really want to mason to put those estates into your uh, into your discard because in if you do so, you ain't gonna be drawing everything and still probably triggering the shuffle, right? <clears throat> and that's going to be a terrible shuffle to trigger. But I guess you might try and go for some of uh, some of those battlefield points all right he still has a this cursed village but uh yeah it's just working at the bottom of the shuffle unfortunately yeah here here it's it's definitely worth a consideration to trash this estate for uh two estates and uh, you know battlefield points Maybe you don't want to do such terrible things to your to your deck yet. Uh, By the way, yeah. Yes, okay. Yeah. If if you don't do it now, then Marcus does it next turn and takes all those battlefield points. Hmm. Mm, that that's that's also true by the way right so maybe maybe you don't maybe you don't need to really do it now right because uh, now you can just uh, trash the copper and uh, you can do it next turn uh, the only concern is uh, does Marcus have two stone masons so maybe he can just take 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 it all and that would be uh, huge. Yeah, even if he, even if he only masons once, then he's going to take the battle four points eight to four, assuming he mm. does it next turn and um, buys a province at the end of it. Yeah, you're right. <clears throat> so yeah. Uh, you would imagine that uh, that's what uh, Pop is thinking about right now. What? Or is he thinking about the arch points? Hmm. Hmm. Um, all right, that's an interesting angle indeed. Hmm. 
So he now has three stone masons in this deck. And what exactly is he going to do about it? So I guess eventually those recruiters turn into plazas, right? And that'll be your arch points. Yeah. But also... Hmm, he might have trouble i mean he's not he's not playing all those stone masons every turn definitely because uh, he ain't just gonna have enough uh, actions oh well, maybe if he gets more plazas well i don't know let's just see let's just see what happens if he gets more plazas that helps with the actions I'm... yeah 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 or is he thinking about taking the estates now I would, I would think he, that's what he's thinking about. <laughs> because, I mean, you definitely take a province here, right? Yeah. But uh, apparently he does not want the estates. It surely feels like uh, Pop is uh, behind now, despite being the first player. And that's mostly because of his terrible draws. First, when he uh, played the recruiter, didn't draw an estate and drew his cursed village dead on turn, whatever it was, to five. Yeah. And then uh, the next shuffle, he bottom decked both the uh, cursed village and the recruiter. So that was uh, quite devastating for, for him. Is there a scenario here where you stone mace with your double plaza? <clears throat> oh my god. He does not want the prince. Alright. Well, that is interesting. I don't think you overpay for four costs because um, you know with this many stone masons you can get as many four costs as you want from your five costs, right? Mm, goes for the libraries, as Steph suggested. Mm. So that's. Uh, is, yeah, is Pop angling for the pile that next turn? Mm. Stone Mason, those libraries down into plazas. Uh, but, I mean, what's, what's the, what's the other pile? He can't really pile the libraries, right? He doesn't have any uh, golds or provinces. And also, um, I don't know if, uh, so Marcus, uh, presumably my, Marcus is going to take like a province here at least, right? So that's uh, another eight points. So this Triumph Arch would need to score a lot for Pop to... Uh, if he doesn't do, yeah, if, if Marcus doesn't Stone Mason... Uh, um, silver down into the states. I could potentially see Plaza Stone Masons estates piling up a pop and maybe getting enough points with the battlefield. Hmm. Uh, but uh, all right. So even uh, okay. Let's imagine we have enough actions for that, right? So uh, we right now have three stone masons in the deck. We can uh, so our buy is going to be a stone mason over paying for two plazas, right? Mm. So we would need to uh, play stone mason twice to get uh, four plazas, then play stone ma another stone mason to get two stone masons, 
and then play two more stone masons to get play, play four more stone masons to get all these states. So I, I don't think it's there. I don't think it's possible even you if you chain the gained stone masons. Mm, Steph says yeah, it's four stone masons. Uh, it's still not enough, right? I don't. I don't think you ever play seven stone masons. I think your limit is six, right? Because you you are not gaining this last stone mason mid turn. You it's it's just more. It makes more sense to to make the stone mason your last buy, right? And overpay for the remaining plazas. I would I would imagine anyway. So if you're playing six stone masons, you're gaining twelve cards, which wouldn't be enough, I don't think. All right, uh, let's count it again. So, uh, stone mason play to get <laughs> yeah. to get two stone masons, right? That's one. Then two stone masons play to get four plazas, so that's uh, three stone masons play, and then you need like four more to get uh, uh, all the states so that's uh, seven stone masons play and that's not counting the one you need to buy to get the rest of the plazas and, and it's also assuming you've got all the actions as well yeah and you can't really have all the actions if you're using your recruiter to uh, trash your copper to trash copper so i don't think it's quite there <laughs> Um, I'm glad we investigated it though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, the the obvious thing here is that Pop's uh, big, biggest problem is that yeah, he does not have a bureaucrat in, in, in the deck. <laughs> if it was for the... Uh, yeah, if there was a bureaucrat, that would have been all different. See, all I can see right now is that Marcus has a ten-point lead and Marcus has a bureaucrat. Uh, yeah. And it's, it's just an extremely strong correlation. I, indeed. Bureaucrat is always winning. <clears throat> all right. So Pop is uh, getting rid of his. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Would you oh, look he's at got that? the bureaucrat. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know what uh, what separates the good players from the from the best players is that the best player can recognize their own mistake in the middle of the game and then still fix it before the game ends. You know, that's that's what pops uh, pops doing here right right now. I I love this play. I absolutely love it. <laughs> So that's uh, yeah, that's, that's a, lot, a lot of libraries. Um, but the single yeah, the single vault he had is now gone. I mean, it, obviously, vault is not the the only way to decrease your hand size here on this board. Yeah, there is plaza as well. So a plaza and stone mason both decreasing your hand size, but. Yeah. Uh, Vault was the main payload. 
I mean, one might argue that stone maces, stone mason is the main payload, but mm, because you're probably just gonna have oh, yeah. the money is kind of not an issue here, right? Because you have all those villager, uh, not the villager coffers, and uh, yeah. Yeah. Wonder if you kill the library here for more arch points. What's what's uh, Pop's arch points right now. It must be stonemasons uh, plazas, right? Uh, yeah, it would be stonemasons and plazas. Oh, wait, no, no, it would be uh, masons and libraries. Hmm. Um, I think he has four masons, four libraries at the moment. Right, you are and right. Three yeah. Three plazas. Yeah. I think I think plaza will eventually be. Uh, no. At this point in time. So right now is uh, three libraries, uh, four stone masons, and uh, what like four plazas? Uh, so yeah, he's just been off a library to the plaza. So he's at four plazas, uh, five plazas now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, five plazas, four stone masons. Hmm, so interesting. Steph here suggests that uh, it's not yet the turn to worry about points as Pop. Uh, all right. <laughs> you know, it's, it's interesting. I think uh, you definitely can recognize some players, but uh, by the way they, uh, they play the game, by the way how, how early they green. And I, I think Steph is uh, uh, one of the obviously one of the very very best players in the world and uh, he it has the definitive style of green as late as possible while for example i think a freaky who's also definitely one of the best uh, players in the world is on the opposite uh, side of the spectrum right uh, because as, as far as i can see he usually greens as, as soon as possible and they're both uh, very successful in their own way so that's. Uh... I, I, I do get what Steph's saying though. Like, you're not stressing about maximizing your points total for the end of this turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean. Like, you, you're not going to be devastated if your stonemasons aren't exactly matching up with your houses. Yeah, you obviously, obviously. So, hey, uh, that's the uh, first bureaucrat play by Pop. Let's see if, uh, if it wins the game for him. Uh, so, uh, Pop right now is definitely... Uh, yeah, go ahead. I guess another underestimated... Um, play, uh, another underestimated impact of bureaucrat is you actually get to see your opponent's hand. And how powerful is that? Uh, yeah, that's that's definitely I think uh, because uh, I I think the the most uh, common uh, uh, you know usually it comes up with the with the cut purse right uh, when you play your cut purse and then uh, at the end of the game they have no coppers but then. You see, oh hey, you don't have a, you don't have a turn next turn, and then you can you know like buy this brands or something like that. <laughs> it comes up yeah. sometimes. Yeah. We just don't get to see it as much with bureaucrat because um, bureaucrat is criminally <laughs> underrated by everyone. Yeah. Uh, all right, so Pop is out of villages, gets a bronze, and is somehow a hidden points because so uh, he loaded on stone masons and plazas right yes he did 
Oh. Um, yeah, so I think he's got six of he's got six stone masons, I think, and I wonder. How many classes? I wonder if uh, Marcus can. Uh, uh, can try and pile here but is that their only mason yeah, I don't think Marcus has enough stone masons to pile up here mm, okay okay In this case, I mean, can can Pop score more with Arch than uh, they already have? I wonder. Because Marcus is getting the rest of the battlefield points here and um, taking a 10 points lead. Yeah, Marcus, Marcus getting this last stone mason would make sense, definitely. <clears throat> yeah, I think, yeah, definitely makes sense to have that last stone mason. So... If, if that stone mason... Wait, oh no, sorry, don't worry. I uh, missed all that. Uh, whoops. And uh, then obviously Pop has a choice here on whether he wants some villagers or whether he wants uh, the stonemason. I, I mean, he might just trash the stonemason and get and buy another one. But uh, still, that that looks a little bit lost at this point because, I mean... Mm. Yeah, I think, I think stonemason is three points for Pop. Mm-hmm. At this point, Marcus can just, uh, you know, just buy the brands without spending any villagers. Mm. And uh, that's going to be good enough, really. So, no matter the result, uh, uh, yeah, Pop definitely is, uh, from, from the very unfavorable position, Pop's definitely fighting in this game uh, very impressively. Uh, but, yeah, uh, I agree with that. Yeah, the pro uh, his, his biggest problem right now is that Marcus, even, on, even if... Marcus is having something that we can consider a bad turn. He has uh, the amount of villagers that uh, you know will still make this turn, you know, be a bronze buying turn. Yeah. So pretty much a, a bad turn for Marcus is pretty much never going to be as bad as a bad turn for Pop. Yeah. And here is library and vault for Marcus, so that's uh, that's probably a turn where he uh, not only buys the prize but also uh, accumulates uh, even more uh, coffers. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, yeah. And pop do the pure crap here. <laughs> I think I think it might be a bit complicated here <laughs> on this board, the bureaucrat pin. <clears throat> so, all of those. Yeah, I think I think it would have taken the perfect shuffle. 
being able to do the crap in. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> it's funny how... Yeah, that, that, that's what I meant by perfect. It would have to be fire grain in the head. You you can't really stop the bureaucrat pin discussion when it started already. It's it's unstoppable. <laughs> so this plaza and this stone mason, those were the last easy points at Pop. Uh, could have gotten right. All right. Uh, yeah, they're the last ones uh, they could get from um, Arch. Yeah. So right now, they can only, uh, you know, Stone Mason for states. Basically, that's that's the only extra points they can get. Yeah, and once you're doing that, that's the third part that goes. Yeah. And then the season 10 active troops. Right, right. <laughs> mm. In this case, he should buy a gold here now. So that uh, this can be turned into two embassies the next turn. So, mm. uh, no, you you wouldn't do it. You uh, you would you would take the gold there so you can turn it into two bureaucrats. Oh, right. <laughs> but no, bureaucrat is. Uh, I I dare to say that bureaucrat is suboptimal here because you can only have nine of those uh, at max because Marcus has uh, one already. I'm not going to fall for your propaganda. <laughs> yeah, buying gold, I mean, what buying gold gives you is the opportunity to get two dashes the next turn. And um, it's uh, the same points as buying Proence. It's, uh, you know, you still need to draw it and play your stone mason and, and whatnot. But uh, maybe if you really hope that Marcus will have stole eventually, you, you try to prolong the game. So maybe it was the uh, correct yeah, move. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, buying gold is better there, but not for the reasons that we were speculating about. Yeah. Just the spot where you resign as Marcus, right? Yeah, to be honest, I mean, obviously uh, we see that Marcus has it in hand handily, but uh, even. Uh, I might get to say that Marcus has it in hand. Uh, yeah, but I mean, uh, with five coffers, it's. Oh, wait, no, no, you might because the province will top there. Yeah, even the even the bureaucrat play can't really save Pop now, sadly. No. <clears throat> yeah, so yeah, if you can yeah, game game and play a second bureaucrat to see that he's lost again. Yeah, that's, that would be, you know, going with the style. I got a little bit nervous there. I thought bureaucrat was about to get um, trashed <laughs> with the Yeah, but Pop is fighting till the very end here. Oh, wait, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so Pop did actually get to see that um, that that he was in a losing position because um, Marcus discarded the estate with uh, when Pop played the role. Mm-hmm. All right, so. So far, going very nice for Marcus. Uh, he won the first two games, and uh, uh, right now is going to be a first player in the third one. And here's a new kingdom. Yeah. So immediately, the first thing I saw: the storeroom and tunnel were right next to each other. Uh, yeah. And if we're talking about that, there is also Walt. Um, and there is also crop rotation. Yeah, so tunnel is like if you. Yeah, there is a lot of things that can true tunnel. Here. Yeah, one one thing is like, if you if you can if you want to discard your tunnel, you can do it on this board, <laughs> indeed. Um, or even uh, necromancer and use zombie spot. Uh, yeah. You can and your opponent can gain gain a rogue and uh, get all the zombies and then dis discard your tunnel <laughs> while trashing something else. Um, yes. Uh, anyways, so uh, how how do you want to build here? Mm, I guess uh, those free golds eventually. Are actually the way to go, right? With the between counterfeit and crown, you those golds would be nice. The only problem is getting there. Um, you kind of want to thin down because the draw is not strong or anything, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think you do want to thin down. Um, so yeah, I think you do want to get to. Oh, Pop's got two five. But pretty amazing all and right i think you do want to get to the counterfeit quickly yeah sure sure you do so, uh, so yeah i didn't notice pop has five two so that's uh, that's really good because counterfeit is the the card you really want to get uh, as soon as possible mm. so you probably don't get the tunnel right right away on, on the obviously you don't open with it and probably you don't get it on like the second shuffle and maybe you don't even get it on the third shuffle but then you you really want to get some hostories some vaults and uh, crop rotation ideally if you can hit six uh, so uh, so yeah de definitely on the first shuffle. Probably not on the second shuffle. Um, yeah. Yeah, it really depends how big you want to build here as well. But you could just fill your deck with storms and tunnels and the crop rotation. And just basically walk to single province every time. I guess that's one one viable approach. That's uh, hmm. That should be quite quite fast to to start green, right? But uh, I don't know. I I would I would try to do like more it just a little bit more enginey, I guess, uh, with the actually uh, building with hostories and walls. And obviously, hostory can you know can boost your draw a little bit with the with the horses. And and you can crown those horses as well. Yeah, that's also true. Apparently, uh, Pope is considering playing it more money-ish way, 
And if you do so, then maybe you don't really want a haven, right? Hmm, interesting. So... Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, what... what for an early crop rotation. What the chat says, right? So, Walt does hit six, no matter what, yeah. so... Uh, uh, that's that's really good because what well, I mean crop rotation is amazing here obviously then no matter what you do yeah and the, this deck is gonna have a high concentration of green cards so you would be expecting to have one of them in hand most turns right Uh, meanwhile, so Marcus opened with the Necro and Silver. Uh, turn three, he can't find any of those. But here they are. Nothing missed the shuffle. Um, buys another Necro. Uh, that's actually a very friendly vault for Marcus. Because bottom deck is two coppers. And There is crop rotation for. Uh, yeah, I'm a bit confused. What what do we try and achieve with these uh, necromancers? Uh, it, I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know really. Mm. Yeah, but uh, as Steph points out, the plain planes, uh, you know, hidden five right now is possible for Marcus because last card is a copper. But uh, then he triggers the shuffle if he plays the uh, zombie spy. So, yeah. Oops. <clears throat> I think he's, yeah, you still have to do it, though, don't you? I mean, you want, you want this counterfeit, right? Because uh, what, el what else are you getting? It, it, nothing that costs less than five does not really help you the whole lot. And yeah, you're getting your counterfeit into the shuffle a turn earlier potentially than you might have. Ew! Wow, that that ain't good. I mean, we knew this shuffle won't be the greatest, but that's that's just a very bad draw. I mean, yeah, because yeah. um, there's a necromancer. As well, well uh, here, well, I guess that's going to be a guaranteed, <laughs> a guaranteed, uh, what you call it, mason to uh, mason hit for Marcus here. Oh wait, never mind. Maybe. Um, So Marcus decided not to. Oh, never mind. Yeah, he, he uh, cycles uh, copper. So it's rather interesting what Pop is uh, opting to do right now. Uh, he can get like another counterfeit, maybe. Maybe just another vault. Maybe maybe it's time for a tunnel. Already. It could be. I think it could be time for a tunnel here. Uh, I wonder if uh, you take a hostery with this tunnel, but uh, I mean, it it won't do the whole lot for you. Indeed, it just probably. No, it was, yeah, hostery is just a village here, and uh, he's only got the vault in his deck that's terminal. I mean. He has this vault, and he probably will get another one eventually, right? So the hostel, it, it won't, you know, it, it would be kind of kind of good, rather. Uh, so Artit is suggesting taking the rock, which is, <laughs> I mean, interesting, because, yeah, Marcus now has the two necromancers, which are already slightly questionable, but a rock will just uh, take all the zombies from the trash. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that's an interesting line, but Pop ends up getting two tunnels, and 
usually you know when you see the board where a tunnel is good you know what's what's the best number of tunnels to have it's usually just one <laughs> well unless there's some later points in the game but we'll see how you know obviously cooperation makes it a little bit better and you know with all the ways you can discard your tunnels here maybe it's just fine So Marcus gains a tunnel here as well by trashing the uh, the estate into it. That could have been potentially very annoying for Marcus. Is he used to the zombie spy, looked at the copper discard of it, and then used the mason? If that had a big counterfeit, they might have been tears. Yeah. Mm, so here's the second vault. And Pope is going to start rolling. So markers now have uh, has uh, crop rotation as well. And yeah, Pope is, Pope is basically almost ready to green, you know, the next time he sees eight coins in hand. And yeah, he does have eight in hand now. Yeah, let's see if he just oh, gets a bronze here. Yeah. And I think it's correct. Yeah, I think it. Yeah, I, th I think that's fine. Uh, yeah, at this point, definitely, it, it is hard to see that Marcus could uh, somehow get ahead in this game. Yeah. I don't see where Marcus is going to... I don't see a path that Marcus can take to come back here. All right. Mm. Uh, another... Another bronze for Pope here. Oh, hey, Marcus was able to react with the tunnel on the opponent's vault. Interesting. Uh, oh, yes, would you yes. look at that? A tunnel discarded by a spy. Zombie yeah. spy. <laughs> but uh, his, uh, his uh, you know, Mason brother ended up being a... Uh, a bit more sloppy. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, counterfeit was clearly the better trasher here. And it's hard as well when your opponent starts five two on this kind of board. Mm -hmm. Whole story, huh? Well, I mean, yeah, I, mean, I guess... Oh, how many horses do you think he takes? Well, it depends on uh, what do you want to buy here. And apparently Marcus wants a five cost, which is probably a vault. Mm. So, and yeah, I guess what Marcus is supposed to do now is that I mean, he's supposed to build really big. I mean, if if he's not resigning, uh, <laughs> uh, because supposedly Pop, while having a lot of money and uh, uh, points advantage, uh, he's not very expected to get really the whole lot more than a single bronze per turn. Maybe like bronze dash at at best, right? So Marcus is supposed to maybe. Yeah, get uh, get more plus buy, get uh, more vaults, get more draw and whatnot. But uh, uh, yeah, at this point, it doesn't look like uh, that's going to help. Yeah, the, yeah, uh, I, I think it's safe to say this game is over. Yep, and obviously this surprise from Marcus, it it won't really help uh, the whole lot, right? This is seven for pop though. Yeah. 
Oh, uh, that can be a hostery. Oh yeah, it can be a hostery. Or just, well. or honest, honestly, just a daishi. I think the host story sounds a bit better. Yeah, Hobbs has got a 15 point lead already. I mean, I think Pop is safe enough where, yeah, you don't have to go for the points here. I think you can um, basically try and um, make your deck a bit better. Uh, you know, honestly, I think maybe even maybe Vault is the best buy. Uh, here even because with the with the amount of golds in the deck basically every time this almost every time you see the vault you you end up having eight right yeah but i i you know i don't have anything against this dashi because if you know for the same reason you you still you're still gonna hit eight uh, with the with the with your vaults so yeah um i'm not gonna complain that he took the dashi there All right, the horse is in the trash now. How did that happen? Well, I guess uh, another sloppy stonemason hit. Uh, yeah. No, no, uh, it was zombie apprentice. So. Oh, oh, all right, uh, all right. Yeah. So you can use the stonemason as a lifeline. That makes sense. Yeah. So Marcus can double here, and um, I guess I guess he should. Um, I mean, technically, if Pop will not find uh, another two coins here, then and Marcus has the same draw the next turn, then uh, he can win on the next turn. Yeah, but if you take two provinces here and Pop takes one, then it's going to be hard for you to win. Mm. Yeah, that's true. It's You're going to be at uh, 30, uh, 32. Uh, no, never mind, at 22, right? And Pop's going to be at uh, whatever it is. Do you take... Province counterfeit, all right. I wonder if you take a crown over a counterfeit there. Mm. And then uh, try and crown the counterfeit later. I mean, yeah, there is this consideration, but you, um, I guess the disadvantage is you can't, with double counterfeit, you can counterfeit the counterfeit, and that's good. But... Uh, yeah, true. You can't guarantee that the crown's going to hit that counterfeit. Mm. Anders, if you are if you are asking about uh, <laughs> counterfeit versus crown, then yeah, it's it, it's not exactly the same thing because. Uh, you can crown the counterfeit and then you have uh, two extra buys but uh, if you counterfeit uh, the counterfeit you can, do crown, you can crown counterfeit in a later turn as well but I think here it does accomplish the same thing I mean it's it's more buys no? Uh, yeah technically um, yeah it is yeah So, uh, Pop's hand does not look extremely good here, but we know that uh, there is still crop rotation, but still, it's just a tunnel for, for him. Oh, never mind, I, I got confused, yeah, yeah. Uh, he didn't still draw, but so yeah, that, that's uh, that's another prize, and that basically seals it. Mm-hmm. 
so Marcus is uh, thinking whether he wants to discard and does so. <clears throat> so Marcus now has a willish and this in hand basically. So that's very good. Mm. But uh, yeah, resignation resignation looks like a you know an option you should probably consider here. <laughs> Cuz uh, I mean yeah. I mean you 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 can't really expect to be able to do it. You you would need your opponent to stall for like three more turns or something like that. Yeah, I think it would have to be three turns of stalling. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen. Well, that's uh, one point upgrade. Uh, Estate in the town. So yeah, uh, the first win for Pop here. It's uh, um, yeah, that was a play too as well. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's good for Bob. Uh, it's uh, it's still two one in uh, in the favor of uh, Marcus. But yeah, uh, let's uh, look at this board. And while doing so, I'll uh, I'll take a break for a minute. So this Marcus, so I think, yeah, it can be silver or scrap here, I think. I think I would take the silver. Hmm. All right, so... Uh, what's so going yeah, on here? So this is a pretty sad board. Um, no extra actions here. Okay, so that we see... Double masquerade versus masquerade silver. Yeah. Okay. Mm. I wonder if you ever take like uh, a higher link in this in this deck. Obviously, if Hireling would just magically appear uh, in your play area, you would be very happy, but... Uh, so, Double Mask is a little bit better here because of uh, uh, Way of the Mule option being being present. Uh, that yeah, makes, it does make it better when they drink blood. Yeah, that makes it a little bit smoother. Yeah, is this 
Fire Force cards are all not very appealing to you. And your capital will get you to grand market faster if once uh, yeah. Capital will get you to a grand market if you that way inclined. Hmm. I mean, do you really want the grand markets here? Because uh, it kind of looks to me like a terminal draw board and uh, <clears throat> um, grand markets ain't going to be amazing with this. But, yeah, I think the only way grand market is viable is if you get really thin and even then still it's still not amazing yeah i mean that no, that's that's going to be a bit too slow here so supposedly mm. i mean <laughs> then again maybe maybe if you have like 10 grand markets then it's it's really good for you and say if you if you have 10 grand markets and you play torture every turn for example uh, but uh, by the time you you get there, your opponent already has like I don't know five bronzes and mm. so I don't think it's really viable. So Pop uh, takes second masquerade and gets uh, the collision immediately. Which is which isn't great, but uh, I mean, yeah, you can salvage it just a little bit by playing one as a mule. Uh, but I mean, yeah. And again, there's no real price points that you're trying to hit either. Yeah, but I mean, do you really want a five cost here? I mean, you just you just want to hit six, right, for the gold. I would I would uh, imagine. So Marcus goes for this higher link here. If you're going to take them higher than what it would be now, um, yeah, yeah. I I also I also like this hiring. I think uh, you know you just have a, a very short time slot where you can uh, you know uh, go for it, and uh, it's it's the right time if you want to do it. And this should definitely be a gold uh, already. And this hand, it might be a council room or for Marcus, I would, I would think. RTT wants a capital. <clears throat> hmm, everybody, wa everybody wants a capital. <laughs> Uh, well, I guess Marcus's uh, like downside now is that uh, he doesn't have a uh, single gold, as opposed to Pope, who does have one. So he kind of yeah, he kind of wants more money maybe. Um, no, M Marcus got the gold. Or is it? Oh my God! Okay, I'm yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm completely uh, out of touch here apparently. Well, I don't know if uh, if Marcus already has this gold. I'm hmm. Um, capital seems a little bit weird to me, to be honest. But it gets uh, gets a council room. All right. So here, not the very. Uh, yeah, I'm just not. I'm not sure about the council room because you've got two masquerades anyway. Um, yeah, but the thing is. Uh, in the end, uh, you know, in the closer to the end game, you council room is the action you you would want to play, you know, as opposed to uh, like playing masquerade, right? Yeah, that's true. In the um, yeah, towards that end game. 
Oh, hey, by the way, so here's a grand market from Marcus, which is uh, hmm, a bit interesting. And it looks like Pop might follow you. Um, yeah, you can also get one here. By the way, I I missed the moment where uh, second hireling got bought. I would look. Uh, yeah, so that was uh, just after um, Marcus got the gold. Mm -hmm. So that was two turns ago. Yeah, yeah. Pop Pop has won. Uh, so yeah, it's all right. Yeah, it's currently in Pop's shop. Pop. Yeah. Oh, it needs to take them. Yeah. So, uh, uh, that's an interesting choice here. Um, getting two goals. I, two goals is good, right? I mean, eventually you want to just fill this deck with goals. So, so interesting. Uh, Marcus decided not to play the council room here. And... Uh, Maybe he was uh, like afraid to. I guess there were several reasons to do that. He didn't want. Uh, he wanted to decrease the chances of drawing this grand market debt. Also, didn't want the to give the extra card. I guess still wanted to trash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a uh, copper room. <laughs> Funny. I guess if you started to go with those provinces, you might as well just get uh, another one here. Yeah. Um. Although, how much money is that? It's uh, 10, right? Uh. Yeah, you can get a province banker. Yeah. I mean, then again, Vagrant is not what you would call amazing here, just because your deck is basically terminal draw, right? You're just gonna draw it dead the whole lot of time. But, uh, yeah, it's it's fine, I guess. Uh, uh, apparently... Uh, <laughs> so, chat is torn between uh, whether uh, cantrips are good or terminal draw is good. Marcus's um, 200, IQ, 200 IQ and he bought the Vagrant pass over the ball. Oh, yeah. Uh, and now we have a third, third opinion that apparently neither is good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would, I would agree with uh, Naismith here that, uh, you know, it, uh, it, can, it can be fine either way. Meanwhile, Marcus is uh, steadily ahead here, and... Uh, yeah, I think Marcus has had uh, four consecutive province turns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I, I don't really understand what this capital is doing. It's uh, maybe... Uh, maybe it was uh, at the moment where it was bought, uh, Pop d just hit five and didn't have uh, any economy and whatnot. But mm, it it's kind of weird to be honest. And yeah, I, I guess it's good for being a threat late in the game. Uh, it can threaten to double problems, kind of thing, but. Yeah, yeah, but uh, but getting it uh, early. Uh, so, 
are Marcus's uh, cantrips on the on the bottom there. Yeah, apparently he knew there is like a grand market and uh, stuff. It's it's still you know it's still slightly annoying that you can't uh, uh, client does not display you you know when you draw your next hand right and you draw uh, like a couple of cards and then you shuffle and draw the rest. Uh, the client does not show yeah, you what show you. what were the cards on the bottom, and you you're kind of supposed to know that it does not really change anything. But you uh, you know you you can exercise in you know whether you uh, were correct about your assumptions or not. Yes, theoretically you should know what cards are on your bottom, but um, yeah, they, they can be a bit hard to remember those at times. So another province for Marcus here, uh, goes in with the, in, into the next turn with three depth, which is not the whole lot, but still might be prevent might prevent him from hitting the province. Usually it should probably be a masquerade pass, but uh, well, I mean, it's uh, with the way of the mule, it's still. Oh. It probably would have been better to pass it. Yeah, the I, copper there. I mean, you he didn't have a copper in hand, so it's still better than passing the silver, I guess. But. Oh right, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. But uh, to be honest, uh, Pop just doesn't, you know, doesn't have any. Um, there is no alt VP. He can't really. There, there is no play left on this board or something. Yeah, you just take this province and I don't know, or <laughs> and you what? Yeah, because yeah, even if Pop didn't take the pro the province here, and Marcus takes the next province. It's gonna be. It would have been too many points to overcome. Yeah, it's almost a dominate buy. <laughs> uh, gets a duchy. I mean, yeah, or whatever you can. I mean. It's just the thing is uh, Marcus's deck is not is not worse. So mm. meanwhile, that's not a bronze for Marcus. It still isn't, right? Uh, no, he's he is one off if he passes the province. Mm. <laughs> Passing the province would be <laughs> rather ballsy <laughs> that here. Would be, that would be an interesting move. An interesting, you know, life choice. <laughs> so that's another province for Marcus here. And that was, uh, yeah, <laughs> that was a hit on the background. <laughs> Hmm? You, you don't buy it there, though, um, obviously. Mm. It did end up um, being nice. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, you know, it it, uh, it managed to hit once at least, so that... Uh, we, ne we need to count the times where uh, it was drawn dead, like here. So it kind of already uh, makes this uh, last turn hit. Uh, you know, it's a 1-1 one -one on the Vagrant. So for those people that are interested, Pop can win by getting every single grand type that's left. Hmm. Well, um, two. Uh, he just he just got two of them, so that's good enough already. Well, well, maybe not. No. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. If I'm not mistaken, it's uh, three to one in Marcus's favor. Three one to Marcus. Yeah. Yes. 
and uh, Marcus is about to be a first player in this uh, next one. So very strong position for Marcus. And let's see if you uh, say that, but uh, it's, it's actually three one in favor of player two. Oh, by the way, yeah, yeah, interesting. That you are you are right. So maybe if the trend continues and uh, Pop can win this game, and who knows what else is going to happen. Uh, Very nice. Anyway, what's what's going on, on this board? Uh, we have pretty much everything here, right? A huge draw, uh, villages, uh, attacks, trashing. The only thing this board is missing is bureaucrat. Yeah, uh, sadly bureaucrat is not present here. So Marcus goes for the doctor. Uh, Pop does not have such. Uh, Possibility here to, well, I guess it's not the end of the world because you can trash with the count here, and count is definitely going to be uh, useful uh, when you start drawing your deck because uh, top decking, you know, the unused scrying pool is going to be like a huge deal. Mm. Yeah. I I think, yeah, count is relevant if you're not going to Doctor, I think. Mm. I'm not sure if I would be getting a count if I already have a Doctor. Yeah, I mean, on on 4-3, you definitely, you know, you, you, get, your de you get your Doctor, but uh, with 3-4, uh, I mean, you, you ain't getting the Doctor here, right, on, on the second turn. <clears throat> So, uh, RTT is uh, suggesting the Daishi Duke, <laughs> but uh, I don't know, you can build a lot here. Well, Daishi Duke is kind of, I guess, uh, aided by Aqueduct points. But yeah, that's a consideration. Oh, hey, so Pop does uh, get a Doctor on turn two, which is uh, interesting. Uh, meanwhile, Marcus has a potion. But yeah, the problem with Dashi Duke is that if they go for Dashi Duke, you can wait till they have like, I don't know, five dashes and or like six dashes even, and then you get the rest of, of them and you are still in a good shape, right? Because your deck is much better, and you can, you know, yeah, they, the, you know, dukes are better for them. But bronze, you can you can buy bronzes and still be quite happy about it. Uh, so far, not going great for uh, a pop here. I guess you take a potion. Uh, yeah, I think you take a potion spot, but yeah, it's a pretty bad spot. Basically, a turn behind. Yeah. And yeah. Marcus had the first player advantage as well. Yeah, definitely, definitely not going good for Pop here. And uh, <laughs> I really dislike Doctor as a card, to be honest. And it just obviously a lot of cards kind of. You can you can get unlucky with a lot of cards and with just you know with uh, any kind of draw in general. But I think Doctor uh, with Doctor those situations kind of come up uh, rather frequently. Yeah, and Doctor can snowball as well. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So Marcus probably should uh, opt for trashing the states here. Yes. Gets one. It's it's fine, I guess. Mm. Gets the festival, and that's uh, 
reasonably good draw. Well, at least his uh, potion comes with two coppers, so that's not a miss. And yeah, and you know that your estate's in your hand, so you can pretty safely stay copper here with the doctor. Yeah. I kind of think you still want to buy a discount at some point. Uh, not for the trashing, just for the... Uh, I, I guess if you're going to do the uh, cheap dodgy thing, then... Not, yeah. I, I don't know, not necessarily so. I mean, you just... Are you talking more of like a um, payload and top decking? Yeah, I mean, there is a limit on how many uh, festivals you really need, right? And uh, count is just slightly better economy, and also you, and also top deck. I think top decking is kind of worth it, right? Yeah, I think yeah. Um, setting up your next turn with a scrying pool on top of your deck is very nice. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm on board with that count. Then um, yeah, it does good stuff for you in the middle of the game, and it gives you um, dutchy juke possibilities later on as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and also, I mean, I, I, I'm not actually, I don't actually think it will necessarily come to that, but uh, it definitely helps you to get uh, duchies, so. So Pop can now trash. Oh, hey, that's that's a good hit, I guess. Uh, it, this should probably be a silver. Uh, definitely. Yeah, so Pop has exactly five economy, right? Mm, I'm not sure to be honest. How many coppers did he trash? Mm. I just trash throwing and play through. Yeah, but... Uh... Could be a fourth one in there. Mm, he trashed four total, I think. So another festival for Marcus. Yeah. Uh... AM, it's a, it's a, it is a match point, so if uh, Marcus uh, wins or ties, well, I guess he can't really... Oh, yeah, never mind. Uh, yeah, but if it is a win or a tie for Marcus, he wins the uh, match here. Uh, do you know who he plays in the next round? I, I haven't kept, kept up to date with that. Mm. I'm not sure to be on, uh, to be honest. Maybe somebody from the chat okay. knows. I I don't think there was. Uh, is it the first uh, quarter uh, quarterfinals match? I think it might be the first. This is the first one. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Freaky Jane Ailes. All right. Safe to say that's a fairly soft matchup. <laughs> Yeah, those two are, you know, not not good, you know. But it, it's just going to be a free win, basically. Oh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, Pop is, uh, despite drawing his uh, potion, he's forced to get another silver because he only has uh, like three coins left in the deck. And that's another thing that Doctor does for you. Sometimes, I mean, obviously you can kind of try and control that behavior, but mm, yeah, Marcus just uh, just uh, roaming uh, forward here. Yeah, Mar Marcus is just rolling at the moment. Yeah. Uh, that's a nice uh, state, guarantee the state trash here by uh, Pop. Mm, I guess I guess he wants the festival now. Yes, I, I, yeah, definitely a festival for me. Um, yeah, 
that's what he does let's see if marcus can draw uh, yeah and and he can he can draw everything here basically he can trash more coppers here and then draw the rest of whatever that is down there um which is uh, like what is silver and some coppers right So what uh, what is it like uh, eight coins? Yeah, I mean I, I think it should definitely be uh, pool and one of the five costs and uh, yeah either count or like tormentor but uh, I I would go for the count because count you know uh, you can also uh, set up the last uh, uh, doctor trash with your count you can like top deck those coppers or like discard them or uh, like either do it with the state but hey here is another uh, bureaucrat okay. follow-up here is mine uh nice <laughs> well uh marcus is definitely feeling adventurous today yeah it's taken, <laughs> it took a bureaucrat and i think it was game three i want to say <laughs> or game two and now he's taking the mine. I mean, mm, I don't, Kevo. Okay, well, I don't think Marcus is really drinking already. It's, um, I, I would expect it's it's uh, an early Saturday morning in Austria right now. Didn't, uh, I, I think I listened to the Marcus interview. Isn't he an economist or something? A communist. Uh, I I would. Economist. <laughs> Sorry. I, I... <laughs> I also I also heard it uh, as a comment. I, I apologize for my Australian as an Australian accent. <laughs> um, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to say something about my mind and getting more money and economists linking together. Right, yeah. I guess you can link mine with communism, as in everything should be mine, kind of. Uh, everything is not mine and is ours, kind of thing. <laughs> Well, yeah, I think I think Marcus is an economist, uh, uh, judging by his uh, interview. I mean, that's what he said, right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Aust Austria is definitely a, a wor world's uh, most famous communist car country in the world. So. Uh, Pop here gets another festival, didn't draw his potion for another pool. Yeah, so Pop only has one pool, I think. Mm, yeah, Marcus has four now, yeah. So Marcus is already preparing for this uh, moment where he doesn't need the potion anymore and he can just turn it into a gold or maybe into an isle. Uh, yeah, it, it's a, it could be a fancy way to get aqueduct points, but uh, it, it probably turns into a model, I think. Mm, yeah. Uh, I'm not too sure, actually. I mean, honestly, it could be either way. It's uh, it's not the biggest deal. So uh, that's not the best draw for Marcus. The last card is a pool, I believe. Uh, yeah, it would have to be. Yeah, that's uh, it. So here, I guess you take you you go with the silver into gold, right, and get a pool and another five cost. Uh, I hope this time it won't be a mine. <laughs> mm. 
Mm. I mean, yeah, I I agree here with the uh, Sif. Uh, you can't really take the idol because I mean, what are you going to buy then? Oh, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I think hitting uh, seven with the potion is better than six, but maybe he's gonna. Uh, okay. no, he's not. Oh. I thought he was gonna be psychic. Uh, with this, with this boon, I guess you just discard your potion and you know get like whatever, like a wishing well, and get a five cost. But. Uh... Uh, yeah, sure. That's. I mean, that's. An, I. I guess actually, that's what you're going to do, right? I don't know. I'd probably be inclined to take the festival anyway, and then count later on. But yeah, the grand market makes sense. I mean, to be honest, grand market is not is a bit less appealing here because you. You already have uh, enough. Yeah, you're already gonna draw everything. Bias, and it's not like you know, count might be just straight up better to be honest. But uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe you kind of want only one count, and then you take the grand markets every time you can you know get uh, the you know the good money. I, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I would argue that festival is better than grand market though, just because you're gonna everything anyway yeah I don't I don't think the cursing uh, the idol cursing is the reason here to get the idols if you do take an idol probably just in, I don't know maybe you want to I think that it. is one of the worst hexes that pop could have just turned there now oh. Marcus gets top deck is uh, two coppers oh, with festival yeah. and doctor in hand. Yeah, that's funny. I mean, yeah, but uh, also Janels is, is is right here that uh, actually Marcus is well. The next turn was a bit un unlucky, but uh, Marcus is uh, uh, quite fine with just uh, drawing uh, through all the coppers and you know. Uh, maybe using them as a uh, boost to the economy, so he's not too eager to uh, to get rid of them. Yeah, trash one copper. Yeah, that, that's true, and I guess uh, mine is going to boost that, um, that economy. Uh, trash one copper, that's something that Doctor cannot do. That's impossible, isn't it? Oh, I mean, I guess that's... Uh, with, with Doctor. The, uh, playing the mine as implied. Ah, uh, right, yeah. Or... Yeah, or that, indeed. Mm. So, Mar yeah, Marcus is not seemingly is not interested in trashing any coppers here with the, with the doctor. Get the estate though. I can wish for copper now, or is the is idle the only thing? Uh, yeah, okay, never mind. <laughs> well, that was not uh, exactly useful. Do you just take uh, double five cost here? Pull grand market. Mm. I wouldn't hate an estate here, I guess. I mean, uh, you kind of, you are kind of doing fine. You can, you know, you can, you can get away with that. Uh, 
two more mines. Yeah, that's that's also a nice consideration. Maybe you're gonna empty. Uh, you, you're gonna you can plan on uh, emptying the gold pile one day. I, I wonder if Pop's gonna end up getting the mine. Why can that bureaucrat game? Uh, where, where they got the bureaucrat eventually? I wonder if they'll end up getting the mine eventually. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's kind of, it, you know, it's it's uh, some kind of, uh, what you call it, a, 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 dare, a, a game of chicken, right? So Marcus is like, hey, I dare I dare you with buying a bureaucrat. And now you, I dare you with buying a mine. So that's uh, either 11 or 10 for Pop here. Basically the same uh, kind of money that uh, Marcus had the other turn. And uh, Marcus ends up getting envious. <clears throat> so now Idol is better than the gold. Yeah, interesting. Uh, that uh, that kind of makes the mine a bit a bit worse, I guess. <laughs> and uh, now we can, uh, with this one as well, you can turn that uh, silver into a mine as well. Oh well, yeah. I mean that that works. Market GM is that going to be an estate? Uh, yeah, grabs 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 the points. All right. Mm. Should be a lot of festivals down there. I mean, the last two cars are. Both coppers, so you might as well get rid of those. Oh, never mind. It was a uh, whoops. Yeah, one was a silver. Yeah, or oh, a, a grand mark. Oh, sorry, almost yeah. grand mark. Sorry. Yeah. Um, no, Marcus. No, I mean, uh, I guess it still kind of makes some sense, but uh, yeah, I guess it still works. Uh, I'm still no. Oh, I mean, this should, this definitely should be a pool and double five, like either a uh, tormentor count or like festival count. I think I, I like that. But yeah, um, Marcus has the actions to be able to go to tormentor count. Because I, I assume you're not going to be playing doctor very often now. Yeah, and also... Uh, can he just, is maybe just double count even better? No. Hmm. So that, that looks, that looks very weird to me because basically Marcus just added yeah. only two, two coins to their deck. And I mean, why? He, he could have, uh, he could have added like the whole lot of economy without uh, actually Grouping the deck or anything, uh, by and with actually making it better. But now the uh, he overdraws already like massively, and yeah, that's definitely yeah. Uh, weird. I, yeah, I think I, I would have preferred uh, scrying pool with two five set. Probably count tormentor, maybe double count, but tormentor just because I like to be spiteful. Uh, 
Um, all right. Uh, so, in fact, I, I, I mean, I'd say Pop is still quite behind, but do you remember the way this game started? Uh, it looks like he was like instantly lost, and now he's kind of slowly getting, kind of getting back to it. I mean, not exactly so, but... So, uh, what's that going to be? It's, uh, it's. Then again, it's, it's the same amount of money Marcus had this the last turn, right? It's basically twelve and a potion, uh, or like thirteen and a potion. So, um, uh, it could be like festival count and pool for uh, pop here. Yeah, I I like those buys. Festival mind pool. Double grand. Hey. They really like those grand markets, though. Are they looking at potential pilots? I mean, obviously, it's you know, it's like a. It is a good card for your deck, but I, it just you can. I, I I would feel you can do a bit better with the. Uh, uh, with the count. Okay. Uh, so Yeah, you don't necessarily want a pool number seven. This might be just a gold or like another idol if you really want it. Mm. Unless... Uh... Yes. Uh, yeah, the only reason to uh, get a seventh strong pool is just to deny your opponent. Uh, well, I mean... Uh, the, the good approach here would be probably to count the money and see, I mean... What does this extra gold do to you? Uh, extra extra three coins is not a joke here, definitely. Yeah, so it looked like they were even on economy before, but um, I was. Um, I think Marcus still had thirteen on his last turn because he had envious in play. Uh, was he envious the last turn? Yeah. Hmm, okay. Yeah, you're right. So, I mean, yeah, basically it's going to be either uh, uh, yeah, I guess there are uh, quite a lot of options, right? You can turn uh, either a silver or potion into either gold or idol. And then... Uh, and then what's next? Uh, because they are really close to the end game actually at this point uh, because uh, pools are gone basically grand markets are extremely low and with the amount of buys they have estates gonna gonna go really quickly so uh, you're gonna kind of need to think about green here maybe Grand markets pile, then. Uh, oh, yeah. 
we're pretty close to three five. So let's actually count the. All right, so it, it is silver into gold. Let's count the gains that Pop has. Uh, Pop has four grand markets and one festival. So it's uh, five buys total, right? Well, that's. Uh, plus the one you get originally, so that's six. Uh, yeah, it's six. Uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Math is hard, right? Mm. Yeah, I, I've missed the potential pile out, <laughs> so I've kind of learned that lesson. All right, interesting. So Marcus just loads on the grand markets. Um, so what does it do? I guess uh, uh, what is what is Pop about to to do now? Uh, with uh, well, what, the... what can Pop really do? Yeah, with six buys, not the whole lot. Uh, it can be, you know what, you know what can happen right now. Uh, maybe some hex that kills one of the, uh, like one of the piles. Some, uh, I don't think it's possible, right? I don't think so. Yeah, that doesn't do the whole lot. I mean, it might hurt potentially because drawing, you know, drawing silvers is. Uh, um, I think Marcus has more than enough draw to be able to deal with that. Yeah, but he's extremely likely to draw back to to it anyways. And then, uh, so Pop obviously Pop needs to green now, right? Because uh, if he does not, then Marcus just takes the states. I wonder if you try, uh, if you go for provinces here or dashes. Uh, Jane L suggests estates. So Pop gets the last pool. Mm. I guess if you're taking a dashi, you'd be better off with the count, maybe. Well, if you if you're not afraid to lose the next turn. What if you take? So if you take one estate here. So if Pop takes an estate here and a uh, count to get the dashi next turn. Twenty eight is so uh, if you take the estate this turn I think that's winning. Pile of states next turn. <clears throat> yeah, that's uh that's the time where Pop is uh, taking taking some time to calculate all this mm. nobody uh, nobody's yeah. talking about uh, road network but yeah uh, 
doesn't do the whole lot here, I guess. Although... I mean, yeah, for Marcus, it definitely wouldn't do much. I think he's fairly safe in drawing his entire deck. Yeah, I mean, uh, Pop would uh, definitely benefit more from Road Network, but still, probably... Yeah, it's more relevant for Pop here. But probably, yeah, that's not the... It's not the best thing you can do, I, I think. <clears throat> I, I think I would just take Dutchie Estate here and hope to draw your whole deck next time. I don't think Marcus can get... Marcus can't get 19 in a pile of states. Uh, I mean, I I didn't count it, and uh, I I don't know if does taking a duchy prevent Marcus from winning on his turn uh, in comparison to taking like a count or like a festival? Uh, because I think if if it does not specifically do that, then you are better off with the count in your deck than with the Dutch in your deck for the next turn. Yeah, I agree with that. But uh, if if he really needs this uh, three points, then it's a, a different story, obviously. Takes a road network. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. So, uh, wait a second. It's like... I don't think Marcus has that much money, does he? I don't know. It's like to uh, 8 for a state, uh, I mean 12 for a state. And then how much else uh, does he need? Uh, he can take a coin, a, a point with the, by playing the mine. Either way, if it's uh, turning something into gold or uh, getting a, an idol, that also, uh, also gives a point. But yeah, it's like, what was that? Yeah, yeah, he has 28. Okay. I miscounted that. Oh, it's not exact. Uh, oh, never mind. It is 28. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, the good thing about uh, Pop's position right now is that uh, they're going to have a really large hand size the next turn. <laughs> there isn't going to be a next turn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, so congratulations. Yeah, so to... the Dutchie still, yeah, if he took the Dutchie anyway, it still wouldn't have mattered because they would have tied and Marcus would have won. I would have taken the series three and a half to one and Yeah. All right. Wait, so, um, I know you went first. No, that's my word. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, so the duchy was needed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, congrats to Marcus here. Very well played, and Bob yeah, definitely um, made a tough competition. So, yeah, that was uh, that was quite enjoyable. I really liked the, uh, you know, this. Uh, Marcus really done it with a style by going for bureaucrat and then I, for mine. <laughs> so that was quite entertaining. Honestly, yeah. honestly, like being able to see bureaucrat and mine in the same uh, in a set of six games being utilized, I, I'm gonna sleep very happy happy tonight. <laughs> right. Uh, all right. Uh, so thanks everybody for watching, for listening, and uh, we can only wish luck to Marcus in uh, in their next game. Yeah, uh, sounds sound good. Um, and yeah, thanks for commentating with me. Uh, yeah, it, it was a pleasure. Thank you, Josh. Mutual. So see you around. See you later.